Ladies and gentlemen, on this special evening, we also take this opportunity to salute a disciplined and skilled person and inspiration, Sri Rabindranath Bhartakur. His diligence towards environmental stewardship made him a legend in the eyes of many. He would share his love for unwinding in the natural habitat with his friends and family. On this special evening, it would only be right to honor Sri Rabindranath Bhartakur and his principles which inspired the people and also laid the stone for the foundation of the Balipara Foundation at his residence in Gohati in the year 2007. We give tribute to Mrs. Meena Bhartakur and her family who are in the audience with us tonight and who have continued to strive to institutionalize his dreams. To honour this tribute, I'd now like to request our esteemed keynote speaker, Mr. Vance Martin, the president of the Wild Foundation and founder and current co-chairman of the ICUCN Wilderness Specialist Group, to deliver tonight's memorial lecture. Please join me now in welcoming on stage Mr. Vance Martin. It's very lovely to be so honoured to not only be here in front of you, but to give this very special recognition to a special man. Uh, Ranjit, thank you for the opportunity to do this. Um, we have a tradition in South Africa. I've spent a great deal of my professional life there. That's where our organization started. I gave the story this morning. I won't repeat it. We were born out of a lot of struggle during the, during the era of apartheid. The world's now moved on from that. Revolution is possible and important. So I want to speak a little bit tonight about where we've come from as people, what we've defined as our civilization, where it's gotten us, and then a word about the future. I won't speak long, but I do appreciate your attention, and I want to honor all those here who I don't know. I don't know your names, but our tradition in South Africa is, um, instead of saying distinguished so-and-so and so-and-so, is to say all protocols are observed. Thank you. Um, This is what I think we're embarked on right now. It's a matter of survival. But as I said this morning in my remarks, I'll repeat, what a wonderful time to be alive. What a wonderful responsibility we've been given at this time of human history. Just as the esteemed gentleman whom we honor this evening with this lecture all of us have the same opportunity to create a new world just as he helped to bring a new organization and a new movement in this part of the world to life. There's nothing wrong with revolution. Revolution brings us to a point where we know we have no choice. That's also why I think we have such a wonderful opportunity. I was speaking to my dear friend Bitu uh, a couple of days ago, no, it was this morning actually, and he said something that I'd never thought of. And he said the, the difference in the children today and when we were growing up is that we had a little bit of time. We could stretch it out. It wasn't quite as urgent. Even we, even myself as a young environmentalist, um, it didn't seem so urgent. It just seemed important. Well, now it's not only important, but it's urgent. So a little uh, walk through a few slides here. I want to talk about civilization. This is what Western civilization started on. I think most of you know the story of Romulus and Remus, how they suckled at the teat of the mother wolf. 
This is a myth that we were based on, and it is a story that we need to rediscover. You know, it applies just as much to the East as it does to the West, because the East has adopted the Western model of progress. So this is really a world story. It's not East and West. It's a story of a myth that we were based on, a story that we need to rediscover. And this word called progress. This is my friend, whoop, gone. Where did you go, Ed? Nope, wrong one. Let's go back, here we go. Ed Begley Jr., very good, good friend of mine. He's a ho Hollywood actor. But we were talking once and, uh, about, about progress and about destroying nature. And he said this to me, and I said, stop, I need to write this down. Because it's true. And what does this quote show us? What, what does it tell us? It, tell us it, it tells me that we're out of relationship. And relationship is the only way that we're going to get our revolution on track and get it moving forward so that we rediscover that story of getting our nourishment from the very teat teat of Mother Nature. Here's what my country is based on. This is a very famous painting called Progress, 1872. There she is, the angel of progress, going from east to west, which is what happened in my country, chasing the savages away, and what comes behind it? Smoky trains, wires. This is progress. This was what happened when we went from getting our nourishment from Mother Nature, from the wild wolf, to today. It's time to have a revolution. The time is now. So here we are. I think many of you have seen this picture. This is a very, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is where we are. And this, is, this was a few years ago. And Friends, this is not where we're going. This is yesterday. <laughs> There's going to be a lot more light out there. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change issued this a few years ago when they first started. You can read it yourself, but I'm going to say while you're reading something I also mentioned this morning. The news in the last six months has been on climate change and biodiversity accelerating at a rate that even the most dire predictions some years ago did not anticipate. What does that give us? It gives us a wonderful opportunity and a, and a responsibility. So we have lots to do. Dr. Reed Noss, one of the great scientists, very good friend of mine, really helped us start this Nature Needs Half movement, where good science shows us that size matters. Large natural ecosystems, land and sea, if they get too small, they can't support life. So that's where this vision, Nature Needs Half, comes from. And Reed, Reed Noss says it very clearly. So when we think of this, we, we often think of big areas of wild nature, such as this area of the eastern Himalaya is blessed with, in the most remarkable way. Let's keep it that way, OK? Because there are plans afoot for a revolution in this area, which is not the revolution I speak of tonight because it follows a model of Western progress that we have to change. Most of our discussions in the last couple of days have been about wonderful rural models. I'm going to change that paradigm because 
Over half of the world lives in urban areas now, and that's going up, and it will continue to go up. In some ways, that's good for wild nature, okay? What's happened in Europe over the last 35 years, many people have flocked to the cities. There is a rewilding going on in Europe, the likes of which humankind has never seen. Remember the wild wolf? Wild wolves are now in every country in continental Europe, breeding. Some people, some politicians, some farmers, unfortunately, don't call that progress. Well, I call that progress because, number one, it's getting us back to that story of getting our nourishment from the wild wolf. We have to learn to cohabit this planet. I just want to talk about cities for just a minute. We have a concept called wild cities. I don't call it urban wilderness. I call it urban wildness, because by definition, urban areas are not wilderness. But you can have wildness. A wild city is that city which understands the importance of biodiversity, the importance of clean air, clean water, of recreation, of space, green space. Does anybody know this city? This is Hong Kong, right. This is Kowloon. And most people, when they think of Hong Kong, this is what they think of. People stacked one on top of another. How many of you know that this is also Hong Kong, 42% protected area? High priority on biodiversity so that the people in that crowded core area have places to go to understand themselves, to understand nature, and to be fed by the wild wolf symbolically. The infrastructure that we've created during this couple of hundred year foray into progress needs to change. There's no place this is more evident, and I don't have to tell anybody in this room, the importance of letting nature move, of corridors, ecological corridors. It's now happening. The revolution is happening. There's tens of millions of dollars of infrastructural revolution right here. It's happening all over the world. It's symbolic, it's biological, it's important. Wildlife needs to move, okay? Nature is not static. The rest of our infrastructure, what I call hard infrastructure, there can be many, many changes. Urban wildness, hard infrastructure wildness, there can be a relationship. And I ask all of us to think that way, to appeal to our leadership, to invest not only in transforming our hard infrastructure, but to, under, to understand and protect and enhance the green infrastructure, which is the very basis of our lives. Ja, uh, Jalana Nature Reserve, uh, sorry, ja, Jalana Leopard Reserve in Jaipur, um, within the city, 40 leopards, many of them breeding, in my experience around the world, it's the only reserve, urban reserve, established for a predator and named for the predator. That's a revolution. That's India. That's what's possible. Just as what Balipara is doing is beginning to transform the definition of progress, this is one symbol of a transformation of relationship. Okay. So in Jaipur, in March next year, with many partners who are in this room, Sanctuary Nature Foundation, Wildlife Conservation Trust, co-hosted by the state government of Rajasthan, we're going to be gathering a great 
a great gathering. It's called the World Wilderness Congress. It's occurred 10 times around the world since 1977. It is the world's longest running public international environmental forum. It gets practical results. I could, I could list them all, but just go online. They're all there. It goes back many years. I'm actually very proud of it. But what I'm mostly proud of is the community building process that this Congress represents. It's a movement. It's a revolution. It's a community that recognizes the importance of right relationship with nature. We have our friends from Bhutan here with us this evening. There is no country on earth that is a better example of right relationship with nature than a Bhutan. In fact, Bhutan has adopted the nature needs half motto as one of their country's policies. I want to invite you all, March of this year, this is a public gathering. Go online, register, come. We have national leaders, global leaders, traditional communities, artists, photographers, spiritual people, people of faith. Why is that? It's because wilderness shows that in diversity is strength. And in diversity, we find solutions that we would never find on our own. So I invite you all on behalf of Pichisego, my partner, Wildlife Conservation Trust, Anish, many others, the Bellipara Foundation, come. It's a wonderful city. I imagine many of you have been there, but the very center of the city is the most recent World Heritage Cultural Area declared last June, the old city, 600 years old. And as some of you know, who know the World Heritage Convention, there are two types of World Heritage rec recognition. There's cultural and natural. And the, the marriage of those is so important. And that's why I'm glad we're meeting in Jaipur, because it's a symbol that we have, uh, that, that demonstrates a principle that Balipara is based on, that the Wild Foundation and the World Wilderness Congress has espoused and practiced for many, for many years, is that culture is the equal of science, policy, and economics. In fact, I give you that culture is more important. We need good science. We need business, we need livelihoods, but we need love. More than anything else, we need love. And culture is an embodiment of love because it informs us of who we are. And once we start loving ourselves and loving our neighbors, we are so much more enabled to love nature. And by doing that, we have a revolution. Simple words, hard task. This is a real postcard. This is what turns me on. I'm sure everybody can read that, but I'm going to read it as well. A speaker isn't supposed to read his slides, but I'm going to read this one, because we have this postcard pinned to our office. It arrived about a month ago, and we've actually basing our whole going forward movement on this postcard. This is from a young middle school student, the Centennial Middle School in Boulder, Colorado. Dear Wild Foundation, thanks for protecting Mother Nature. What an incredible compliment. I don't go outside a lot, but I'm very passionate about being able to breathe and see cute animals. There's no name signed here. He signs off with a citizen that likes to breathe. I mean, how powerful is that, eh? I even like how he spelled breathe wrong, and he said breath. Makes it even better. So anyhow, everyone, I just want to thank you again. I want to invite you to join the survival revolution, just as Balipara is doing, and just as the man whom we honor this evening did in his life. Because he knew that 
it is a matter of survival. It is a matter of new models. It's a matter of having right relationship with nature so that number one, we support all life. Number two, we create livelihoods based on true sustainability. And most importantly, we learn about love. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank you for a most thought-provoking and inspiring lecture. And I'm sure everyone here would like to join me in also thanking him again very, very much indeed. Thank <laughs> you.